Welcome back to Wadcast, guys. Hope y'all doing well out there. I'm your host, Wad, as always. And in this video, we're going to be doing a couple legal updates to two cases, one in New York and the other in Georgia. First, we're going to be looking at Donald Trump being denied his appeal when he was trying to go to the New York appeals courts to try to put a pause on the current civil fraud trial that has been proceeding. It's been four days or something. Uh, anyways, uh, that was denied today. OK, uh, and we're going to go into some of the details on that. Very short update. Secondly, much longer update. We're going to be looking at Kenneth Chesborough being denied his motion to dismiss the RICO indictment against him in Georgia. Chesborough was working with uh, Giuliani and with um, uh, John Eastman to try to overturn the election. He was one of the people who was the mastermind behind the fake electors scam. Okay, along with John Eastman. Anyways, he was denied, and we're going to go into the ridiculous arguments that were made there. Very unusual arguments. More than ridiculous, they're just weird. Okay, so I'm going to break that down. But first, we're going to get started with Donald Trump. So uh, as you guys can see here, appeals courts rejects Trump's last ditch effort to halt the ongoing civil fraud trial hours after he dropped the lawsuit against the judge. Oh, that's another thing. Uh, I didn't even cover this because it was just too hilarious. He was trying to sue the judge because of the fact that he didn't like how the judge ruled in this case, trying to sue the judge for a variety of ridiculous arguments, which I'm not even going to go into. It was a, it was, there was no way he was going to succeed in this case, and he dropped it. His reasoning, his, their reasoning was, oh, there's just too much stuff going on. The real reason is they have no chance of victory. It was a retaliation lawsuit against the judge, Judge Angoran, uh, the judge who just ruled against him uh, a couple weeks ago in the trial held his companies liable and himself and his sons. He was suing the judge. Uh, uh, he started suing the judge in mid-September as a maneuver to stop this uh, federal, uh, excuse me, state level suit. Um, it was never going to work, of course, but and their lawyers most likely realized that, that they couldn't achieve any victories there and they dropped the case. OK, but anyways, this particular update has to do with the arguments that were made to uh, pause this trial. The appeals course obviously didn't buy that. They were trying to say that the judge who ruled in summary judgment uh, in the fraud charges that because the fact that he ruled without trial and without reason, that's not true, they claim that it was without trial and without reason, uh, and it made the operation of their business impossible. Okay. Now, the appeals courts did two things. First, they struck down their request to pause the trial so the trial would proceed. What the appeals courts did do is they put a pause on Judge Angoran's um, uh, order to break break apart and basically destroy um, his business licenses. So that'll be put on hold, most likely until the trial is resolved. I don't know what the exact date of that is, but the uh, but the carrying out of the dismantling of his business licenses that has been put on hold. And I think that makes sense. You should wait until the trial is resolved. Uh, and so that part I have no problem with. But anyways, the trial is not stopping. The trial is moving forward. Trump's side has no arguments here. The fact that they don't like that, the fact that the judge decision adversely affects their business ha is not a viable legal argument that's ridiculous okay i can't believe that they actually said that who cares okay the judge does not have to take into your financial situation into account your business's financial situation into account uh for his rulings the law is not going to take a back seat to your capitalist interests okay in this case the a capitalist interest of one specific business. It's a sad day for you that you committed civil fraud and you have been found guilty of, found liable for such. Okay, not guilt because it's not a criminal case, it's a liability. They've been found civilly liable for fraud and the judge, yeah, there was no trial, there was no uh, uh, evidentiary trial because the judge determined in summary judgment, which allows the judge to rule without a trial in civil cases. Uh, in criminal cases, everybody gets a chance to get a criminal trial according to the Fifth and Sixth Amendment. Okay, uh, in civil cases, there is no uh, life and limb at risk, so you don't, you're not guaranteed a trial. That's another thing stupid idiots on the right don't understand, and some people on the left. Uh, you don't, you're not always guaranteed a trial. You're guaranteed a trial in criminal cases when you can go to prison okay so that's the only time that you're guaranteed a trial you're not guaranteed a trial in civil cases and so and there's no reason for you to be okay because you're not going to go to prison in a civil case trump is going to have to uh his business are going to be hurt he's going to have to pay money but he's not going to prison and the constitutional rights do not apply there for that reason okay you're not guaranteed a trial in civil cases so get that through everybody's skulls okay people who don't understand that be like oh you, how could you decide this without a trial because you're an idiot and you don't understand the law okay this is a civil case not a criminal one 
Trump is not risk at risk of going to prison. So his constitutional rights don't apply here. The Fifth Amendment doesn't apply here. Okay, that applies when you're when you're in a criminal case, you have to get a trial. Okay, if you want a trial, you can get a trial. In a civil case, the judge can decide in summary judgment to not give you a trial and rule against you. Summary judgment doesn't exist in criminal cases. Summary judgment only exists in civil cases, and for a good reason. Because the court's time is not going to be wasted. The jury's time is not going to be wasted with frivolous cases, which is exactly what their claims are. Their claims are frivolous. They have no evidentiary basis to bring these arguments. They, they committed fraud. It's in the paperwork. It's in the financial documents. So the judge had all the right to rule against them. Okay? So absolute uh, disaster when it comes to um, both these cases. They had to drop a lawsuit because they're so pathetic, they suck, and they lost their motion to pause the trial because, again, they don't have any viable legal arguments. The only thing that was fair that the appeals courts did was they put a pause on the dismantling of his businesses until the trial is resolved, and I think that's fair enough. I have no problem with that. So let's move on to the next story. Uh, so this is, once again, Judge McAfee over there in Georgia ruling against Kenneth Chesbrough. Yesterday, I told you that this would happen when I talked about Sidney Powell also losing her motion to dismiss. Okay, so uh, Georgia judge overseeing the historic racketeering case against the former president and more than a dozen of his allies and uh, and, and supporters is apparently not without a sense of humor. Uh, in a sca uh, scathing order issued Friday, Fulton County Judge McAfee denied Donald Trump Rico co-defendant Kenneth Chesbrough's request to dismiss the indictment against him. Okay, so this was the weirdest um, argument that I've seen in a while. Okay, this is so out of left field because what they were, what he was trying to say, Kenneth Chesbrough's side, is that the one of the prosecutors on the case neglected to file the oath of special assistant district attorney, and therefore that's a violation of Georgia law because all prosecutors who work with the district attorney have to take the same oath, and he didn't take the oath. Of course, this is all BS because that that rule doesn't apply to a special uh, special. Uh, special case specific district attorney, which is what this person is. So the judge knocked down this stupid argument. But this is very weird in a motion to dismiss. Okay, usually motion to motions to dismiss are uh, brought based on a lack of evidence, where the defense claims that the prosecutors can't uh, maintain the charges at, on at face value, like facially insufficient charges are brought against the defendant. There's no way you can prove them, and so the judge sh should throw them out the window. That's usually the go-to argument. Another one is. Is, uh, challenging the jurisdiction, uh, personal jurisdiction, lack of personal jurisdiction or lack of um, subject matter jurisdiction. Those are some of the other reasons uh, in a motion to dismiss that defense attorneys will bring. Um, la um, lack of um, statute of limitations. So the, as when the statute of limitations have expired, that's another reason that defense attorneys ask to dismiss a case. And those actually do work because if the prosecutors have waited too long to charge people, and the statute of limitations have expired, then you have to drop the charges, okay? But prosecutors are smart enough where they know what the statutes of limitation are. Um, another one is venue. Uh, improper venue is another argument that that are that another argument that's made during a motion to dismiss where the, the case is not being brought in the proper court. It's similar to jurisdiction. Uh, it's basically a jurisdictional argument. Um, and But no, no, they're trying to attack the oath that was not taken by Nathan Wade who's one of the ADAs, the assistant district attorneys in this case. And of course, the judge ruled against that. First, uh, this is from the judge, Judge McAfee. The motion fails to establish that this code section even is relevant to special ADA Wade, McAfee wrote. Noting that the prosecutor was hired to assist with this case only. So he's not a regular line prosecutor for the office. That's what it seems like. I don't know the history of Wade, but he seems like he was just... Uh, not seems like he was just hired for this case. Okay. So he doesn't need to take this oath under Georgia law. That's for regular prosecutors who just work for the office normally. This guy is only on this case. He's not a regular prosecutor. He's a special prosecutor, a case specific prosecutor. Since the law provides an exception for prosecutors handling particular cases only, McAfee noted, Wade wouldn't be subject to the requirement. So they're so like this is why there's the why I call Donald Trump's lawyer so stupid. They like, you didn't know that you didn't know that this rule only applied to line prosecutors and the district attorney. You didn't know that. So in a motion to dismiss, they could have brought much better arguments, much more viable arguments. They would have still, still been rejected, but they would have been much more viable than this, this piece of crap over here. OK, so they brought the literally one of the weakest and weirdest arguments I've ever seen to try to dismiss this case. And of course, they were denied. Okay. <clears throat> the judge goes on to say 
that the defendant's motion recognizes this exception, but then blithely moves on without adequately explaining why it should not apply, uh, the ruling said. Even if Wade was had not been brought on to handle this specific case, Georgia law specifically provides that the official acts of an official shall be valid regardless of his omission to take the uh, the file uh, uh, to take and file the oath. Excuse me, except in cases where so specifically declared. So even if he didn't take the oath and he was a line prosecutor, the prosecution would still be valid. So even if Wade was removed, there are many other prosecutors working on this case. At least two, I would assume. There's usually like two or three prosecutors on a case right? Two ADAs usually. Um, and so, yeah, even if Wade was removed, the indictment would not be dismissed. So even if they succeeded in removing this uh, this prosecutor, uh, what's his name? Uh, Wade, what's his first name? Nathan Wade, even if they removed him, it doesn't matter. The, the indictment would not be dismissed. The prosecutor would be removed, okay? But the case would still go on. So they're so dumb. This, this argument is one of the weakest I've ever, like literally I've ever seen at a state level. It's so, so ridiculous. They would have never succeeded even if they succeeded in getting Wade out off the case, okay? But they didn't succeed at that either because the oath, the law that they're talking about regarding the oath doesn't apply to this prosecutor. Chesbro failed to address this provision of the law, according to McAfee. One might think distinguishing the safe harbor provision would be central to the defendant's argument. Uh, one would be wrong. The defendant's citation is tucked away in a footnote with only the unsupported assertion that prosecuting a criminal case is one such, spe such specially declared situation. The court has not been provided nor located any authority to support this claim. McAfee's third point, uh, okay, I'm, we're not going to go into this stupid Monty Python stuff. I don't give a damn about none of that. But anyways, the point is that argument failed on all fronts. And uh, the judge go, went on to further uh, beat that dead horse. But the point is, Chesborough's lawyers are extremely stupid. And they literally chose one of the weakest arguments they could ever bring. Like, it would have been easier for them to just attack the, uh, bring an insufficiency of the charges argument, basically trying to say that the charges are weak. And Chesborough would have the best chance at that compared to everybody else. Because Chesborough, Chesborough actually covered his ass in the memo that he wrote. He put a lot of legal caveats in there, unlike uh, other people uh, who've written memos like this. Um, we all know who they are. The, he actually covered his ass a lot. So I'm not I'm not 100% guaranteed that Chesbro will be found guilty. Okay, I knew he would be indicted and I knew that the motion to dismiss would be would be weak and will be dismissed and it was. He's going to trial, but I'm not 100% sure that Chesbro will be convicted. Now, it's up to the jury, but I can see some at least like 5% chance that he might succeed. So usually you guys know what I say, they're going to be found guilty because they are because like, there's no way any reasonable person could find that they're innocent. But in this case, he covered his ass a lot in the in the legal memo and you can go read it for yourself uh, to see what I'm talking about. He put caveats in there where he made sure to protect himself from what he was saying in the paper. Okay, so that's good. That's smart thinking. Unlike the rest of Trump's lawyers who are a bunch of effing idiots, uh, he actually covered his ass a lot in those papers. So it's 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 not it's a it's a good. The prosecutors have a good case, but not a, not an ironclad one. So Chesbro, I'm not sure that he's going to be convicted 100%. Usually I tell you guys, for example, I told you yesterday that Sidney Powell will be convicted because there's no way that any reasonable jury would think otherwise. She did it, okay? She participated in the RICO enterprise. She was involved in everything, most of the things that happened in Georgia, uh, including Coffee County, and the prosecutors have a good chance to prove that, and I think they will succeed. With Chesbro, I think they have a good chance to prove it, but not uh, not a great one. Okay, there's some chance that the that the jury might vote um, in favor of Chesbro. To f at least one person in the jury might vote not guilty. So I'm not sure that this is an ironclad case. But nevertheless, the prosecutors are. I think he should be prosecuted. But I'm just saying that there's some reasonable doubt, some some small amount of reasonable doubt based on what he wrote in that coup memo. Just based on that. So hopefully they have more evidence. The prosecutors have more evidence than what we've seen to prove his criminal intent. Then, then you know, he, they, they would have a better chance at convicting him. Based on the evidence that's available now, he does have a chance. That's all I'm saying. OK, I, I whether you like like to hear it or not, I tell you guys the legal facts. OK, I don't like Chesbro, but I'm just telling you his legal chances are much better than any of the other people involved in this case, at least the prominent ones that we know. OK, so that's about all I got to say for this video. Um, I'll be doing more updates as things happen, and uh, I expect that the that Trump's side and his allies will be losing more 
motions. That's usually what happens. That's what I cover on the channel because they suck. Their lawyers suck. They suck. They really don't have any arguments because they're all guilty. But nevertheless, even on technicality ground, even on legal technicalities, their arguments still suck and they don't succeed. So that's all I got to say for this video. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. If you want to see more of my videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to keep current with the videos that I'm making. And if you have been watching for a long time and appreciate my content and the time that I put into these videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I post all the legal documents I use in my videos on Patreon for my patrons. I also post extra legal content when I don't have time to make videos on Patreon for my patrons. As a patron, you can also contact me directly on Patreon to request a video or ask a question about a relevant topic. These are all privileges that I provide for my patron supporters. With all that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a very nice day.